Hey everybody, back out in the shop and winter time is coming and I want you to look right over here in this corner. I'm going to put, see right there, I'll put a little spot. Uh, might not be right immediately when this video uploads, but look back or look at the end of the video for all them different squares. I'll put them on the end. Um, different links to this heater, how to build it, what it's all about. Uh, let me get over here in my mess. There's a big diagram. And if you want a diagram on how to accurately build one, I'll, I'll send you one. Um, I have to make a new one, but this heater has got uh, regular used motor oil. So this uses waste oils, cooking oils, transmission fluids, uh, virgin hydraulic fluid. Do not use the one with the synth uh, the um, whatever that crap is they put in it. Yeah, you don't want that. Um, any kind of light oils, it'll run on it and diesel fuel, waste diesel fuel. Uh, we'll even put sour gas in it from cars. It has to be pretty dead stuff, but we'll put that in there. And this heater will burn it, and it'll burn it clean, very clean. So what it does is uh, it has an air charge that goes into it. Let me show you this right quick. And turn this light on because you have to have that in there. All right. So over in here, we have a compressor. That's not the air source. This is. It's a bilge pump. So I'll put a link to everything. Everything I'm using in parts-wise, I'll put a link to, and you'll be able to go find these items. Now, this is a different setup than most people have built. And share this video to somebody who might have been trying to build one of these, because this one here has been working for, like, I guess five years now, and it's clean. This whole stack, clean. It is a, it's double wall from this point up, but it's clean. I even have a little thing in here for blowing, shooting a big charge of air up through there to make sure it's clean. It is clean. So now, uh, burns so bright that it's in the in the roughly about 4,000 lumens. And if, once it's go, going for about five minutes, you will need a welding helmet to look at that and see inside there. Um, the, uh, the system works by me using a starter fluid or diesel fuel. I mix it 50-50, so I use the, the bottle for grill fluid, you know, just the regular stuff. And I'll put it 50-50 with diesel fuel so it gets a hotter charge. And then I pour it in here, down the line. Here's the admitter valve right here. The admitter valve mixes it down. It goes into that little cup. You see that little cup right there? And it's all brazed in. And that little cup is attached to a piece of 3 8 OD copper that is kept centered inside this pipe all the way down to right here in the middle. And then the pipe is manifolded, so you can see the air pressure line comes in for the airflow, comes in here, and keeps that center pipe cool as the oil comes in right down there at the very bottom. I don't know if you can see that very well, but there's the tip of the pipe almost sticking out the bottom there. So we're about three-eighths of an inch above the metal, and it allows atomization at that rate. This metal will glow, and you see that big piece of metal down below that? That is a platinum-coated plate that come out of a Mercedes diesel. And we use that because it really gets red hot. Now, the other pipe coming in over here, that creates that creates the vortex. And this thing really gets going. So, now, we're going to do a fire up on it. And I'm going to show you some details. And I'll, I'll tell you more as we do that. So, um, here's the two, the story, the story of two torches. And I'll put a link to these things because I did a video on this a while back. And people are like, where the hell I get that at? This is the normal TS-4000. I'll show you that. And normally you'd use this for like heating metal, soldering, welding. And then this one here is the best brazing torch you'll ever get. So you see that? I'll lock this one down. I just love this damn thing. So let me lock it in place. And then I'll kick this one here on. So if you notice there's a slight difference there, all right? Now, I can use either one of them to start this up with, but I like to be an ass and start it with some real power. Now, um, here's the process. We're going to go ahead and get the fuel in, the starter fuel. This heater has not been started since last year. I did get up top and check for uh, certain things, bird's nest, all that kind of jazz. You want to make sure it's clean. So Here's my starter right there. And we're going to drop some in like that. Goes right down the center. And you'll see it coming out the bottom. Now, this heater has been used a lot. 
and it's still in really good shape. A little bit of char in there, but very clean. You can see the door has only got a little bit of nothing in it. So it stays very clean. I've seen people build these oil heaters, and they, man, they just get loaded full of crap because they don't burn hot enough. This one burns so hot that it literally, we have to idle it down all the time. So now, it's still a safe burn as long as you do like I did. Ceramic brick wall, you know, that kind of stuff. Make sure it's on the concrete. But that's done. Now we're going to open up the valve here where the oil flow comes in. So I'm going to make sure my valve's open over here. That's to my, my uh, fine filter. And then through here, we'll go and we'll open the valve up. So you'll see it'll start getting dark. There we go. We got a little bit in there. And then that, look at my hand. That little tiny drip like that. Just a little bit. And this is a three-quarter inch valve, so you can imagine. I can get it to about right there. You can imagine the size of that. All right. Now, the next fire up stage is the tissue stage, where I just throw a little bit of tissue in. And then I'm going to light it with this. Now, we're going to add the air to it. Now over here, I have a cool down timer and a power up. You'll hear that blower. That timer's for when you do the shutdown on it. And now we're burning. So my shutdown procedure is just kill the oil and set the timer for 15 minutes so the blower continues to run air down the tube, cooling the system down so you don't get what other people get, caramelization. So now I'm going to just get it spotted up a little bit. And I hope this phone is as good as my other one was because it's starting to get white bright now already. And as you can see, there it is right there. And now I'm going to get some more heat to it by adding a little more of that mixture from this valve here. And there you go. You see the size? That mixture is going to come down and hit it here in just a second. And that's to keep that oil going until you reach temperature. You can already see the glow of that pan right there. Now, that's a stainless nickel pan. You have to get one that's nick got nickel in it. And that, and that is a 10-inch pan right there. Um, believe it or not, dog food bowls, they're good for this. And then, of course, it's sitting in a 13-inch cast iron pan. So we'll go ahead and add a little more to it. We want to keep it, get it good and hot. You'll see it there. Now you probably heard that burp pick up some speed there. Now, up and burning. We'll get the closure on it. Now, this barrel kit and everything, I'll put it below the video where you can get the best prices on them. And the way that I do this is I put a I put a fireproof gasket around it because they don't come with one. And you can get a fireproof gasket kit. They're just a few dollars. Before this door gets too hot to handle, I'll get her clamped off because I want a good seal and I want my draft coming in down here in the vents. Now you can do this and you want to do it like I'm showing you how to do it. Look at that one-handed, put a clamp on one-handed. That's some freaking talent. All right, now you'll see that again. There it is, a little bitty fine, fine, fine hit. So we don't have much oil flow going into this. It doesn't take much. Take a look here. Sucks in a lot of dust, don't it? Now, over here on the side, and I recommend if you use a drum to do this, be sure that you put a metal, a uh, salvageable metal or a metal you can dispose of or some waste metal inside it about two feet high because the temperature is going to get extreme on this. So, I mean, I, I, I recommend somebody get like a, if you get a 55-gallon drum, get two, cut one of them in half, and bow it inside or whatever you're going to do before you put the top back on, and make sure that top get, goes back on with screws, and you can take it apart, reach in, and clean it. But there's the barrel adapter that normally would go on a barrel that would lay that away, and this one is this way, and it's coming out the side. Now, there's a reason I do that, because that vortex allows the heat cresting inside of this to build up even hotter. Now, we've been burning for a couple of minutes, I guess. Let's get a let's get a picture of temperatures. Here's my concrete floor, 56 degrees, 57. Now, here is the side of this. 
161, 165, and it's just going to continue to build. We're going to get to a temperature of about 475 to 500 with this uh, fairly quick. So it'll just continue to build. Now, it takes about six minutes for it to get up to its full uh, temperature on it. So you don't have to worry about, you know, getting it too hot too fast. But you can see in there how bright that flame is getting. And the other input air is getting to where it's causing it to start spinning. All right, so you can get in there. I'll see if I can get a better look in there for you. Starts to get bright. Flame will get a little lazy until it really gets that going. But the temperature of this thing will heat this entire half. The shop is 42, I think, 40 or 42 by 100. And we're, we're in a 42 by 50 area. Now, the second thing, the, the enclosed area is 42 by 50. So the second thing is I have these blower fans, just recycled goods. And then over here, we have one that works on a thermal switch. You see that? Two different layers. So the worst part of the winter, we set that one. The regular part of the winter, like now, where we're at, it's not that bad. We set the second one where it's on now. And it just uses a standard blower fan. It's mounted to a piece of four inch exhaust pipe that goes through the whole heater. And out here on this side, it's starting to bring its air temperatures up. And down here now, let's check this one again. And within probably about 10 minutes or less, we'll be at nearly 600 degrees total. And we keep this at 600 when we run it. All right, guys, there's the fire up. There's the rundown. There's the basics. I'll try to get a whole list of the parts and a diagram and make sure you get to all the links that are involved with the building of this thing. This has heated my shop for many a year. We love it. Use motor oil and it burns damn clean. All right, guys, y'all be good.